Well, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you that are here today. So we are here to present the SDGs in the Classroom Curricular Innovation Hub at York University. And I am Sandra Penniston. I'm an assistant professor and the project lead. And here today with me uh, are Tracy Bula and Nina Mabatia. They are the project coordinators and the SDG curricular experts. I'm actually presenting from Scotland, so I'm going to mute my, or not mute, but I'm gonna go off camera uh, just to ensure that my inter internet connection stays uh, nice and clear. But welcome everyone. Okay, Ninema, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is our agenda. We're going to provide an overview of our journey to developing the SDGs in the Classroom Curricular Innovation Hub. We will spend some time focusing on the different components of the hub, and then we'll focus in on the community of practice, the importance of partnering and connecting. We will spend a good chunk of time looking at the faculty toolkit with a scavenger hunt activity, and then end off with a question and answer. So how did we get here? Well, support for the SDGs is an integral part of York University, and it's actually part of our university academic plan. And it's um, it, it puts our university academic plan challenges its faculty members, students, other staff to work together and to work together towards the SDGs through building new tools, developing strategies, and providing solutions to global challenges. So that's where it started. A key faculty member at York University, Dr. Cheryl Van Dalen Smith, was awarded a Provostial Fellowship, and her project was More Than Bees and Trees, Seeing the SDGs in Our Curriculum. What this project did was it broke through that misconception that the SDGs were only about environmental and climate change issues. And as a result of the fellowship's 50 plus consultations, it was evident across York University that faculty that were actually doing a lot with the SDGs. But what Dr. Van Dalen Smith's vision was, was to sustain that, but actually scale up those efforts to more faculty. And it was felt that this could really only be, be achieved by giving faculty those tools. And so what happened was, or what came of that vision was the development of the interdisciplinary faculty SDG toolkit. And we're gonna showcase this um, a little bit later in our presentation. Next in 2022, the York University Academic Innovation Fund was awarding grants to projects that focused on the SDGs and focused on um, projects around education for sustainable development. And so an application was submitted um, for our idea of the SDGs uh, Curricular Innovation Hub. And we were awarded up to $300,000 over three years to implement our project. So this is a schematic diagram of the different components of our project. So overall, our vision is a pan-university interdisciplinary scaffolded strategy with our vision to incubate and celebrate the infusion of the UN SDGs into York's classrooms. And we start off, if you go over to the left, we start off a big part of student engagement through experiential learning, awareness and capacity raising, the development of the toolkit in a teaching app, the um, start of an interdisciplinary community of practice, faculty training and education, a curricular innovation by augmenting existing innovations that are already happening and developing new innovations, the importance of developing really strong partnerships and research. And so the leadership of our team or our hub is made up our, of our overarching leadership team. And that team is responsible for the project design, the oversight and the implementation. And then we have our collaborators and our partners who are faculty members and students that are responsible for project design and implementation. And then our on-campus allies are those departments and partners across our campuses, campus that really support and help us with our hub. So we've done a lot in our year one. So we recognized early on the importance of having students involved in this hub. So we hired two part-time research students, undergraduate research students to help out with our projects. The toolkit was launched before the hub, but there's been that ongoing um, development of it with, through our project coordinators, updating it and developing it, adding to the toolkit. 
It was translated to French this year, and this was actually a project that we worked on with a faculty from our Glendon campus, which is our French campus at York. And the toolkit was actually used as a project in one of the classrooms, a student project. And so it was translated into French through a student project. We have an engineering faculty member that's developed a prototype for a gaming app that we hope the faculty, the faculty can use in their classrooms to teach about the SDGs. We've uh, strengthened our community of practice, and we'll speak about that in a little bit. We've added four additional curricular champion videos. We developed a five-part workshop series with the Teaching Commons, and this is open to all disciplines. And it's a series of online workshops where we help faculty see how SDGs could be incorporated into their classrooms through different pedagogy, teaching practices, course design, assessments. We had a conference and teach an event in May, and it was related to the importance of partnering and collaboration for the SDGs. We funded student capstone projects that were related to the SDGs. We focused, um, we supported co-curricular activities, specifically the UNHAC, and the UNHAC is led by our engineering department. And it's a weekend event where students from all disciplines come together and work on solving a problem related to the SDGs. Um, partnership building is very important. And the last thing is knowledge mobilization. So a lot of talking about the hub to faculty council, conferences, and different speaking engagements. So the community of practice is a really important part of the hub. And what it is, it's a, it's a place for York faculty and partners who are interested or want to be involved in infusing the SDGs into curriculum across the campus. Um, using a co-creation approach, uh, the community of practice fosters the ability of its members to um, achieve their shared objectives. So it's for all these members to come together and with the objective of how do we get the SDGs into our classrooms. And so um, we help each other, um, we build upon each other's expertise and experience. We have quarterly meetings where we um, update our projects. We showcase faculty innovation and student-led projects. We invite external guest speakers. And then we're constantly communicating events to our community of practice members. <clears throat> One thing um, that we did last year was a visioning exercise. And so we brought our community of practice members together and we had focus groups. And it happened over the course of about a couple of hours. We had focus groups with specific questions that we asked our focus group members. Um, we asked, how are the STGs important to you? How could a community of practice support you? What could ripple out of the community of practice? And as we were speaking in our, in our focus groups, we had a graphic designer designing along the way, designing our vision along the way. And the graphic designer, Sam Brad from Drawing Change out in BC, came up with this vision for us. And so... And our, and our overarching theme that came out of it was to breathe life into the SDGs at York University. So this is our go-to. We constantly come back to this visioning um, exercise to remember why we're here with our community of practice. I spoke about curricular champion videos. So an SDG, an SDG curricular champion is someone that is part of our community of practice someone that supports and mentors other faculty members to understand how they're infusing um, SDGs into their classroom. Um, they speak to the latest pedagogical thinking um, and they showcase their learning and teaching activities. And this is an example of one of our curricular champion videos that we're going to play for you today. Climate change is an existential threat to our planet and humanity. Extreme weather events amplified by climate change, such as the recent devastating floods in Pakistan, demonstrate the urgency of limiting global warming. Yet, often we feel overwhelmed and powerless. What can we do to address climate change in the university setting? My name is Burkhard Eberlein, and I'm a professor of public policy and sustainability in the Schulich School of Business. I incubate future leaders for positive change on climate action right here at York University. 
Students in my fourth year BBA class on corporate social responsibility in a global context learn about the global challenge of climate change. We focus on Sustainable Development Goal 13, Climate Action, which calls on the global community to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. My students quickly realize that global climate agreements and current business and government actions fall painfully short of where we need to be in terms of required emissions reductions. In the search for solutions, I encourage them to see the connection between this global issue and their own local community, York University. York University is committed to achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2049 or sooner and to curb the university's direct and indirect emissions by 45% by 2030. But how will York get there? This is where I challenge my students to propose specific initiatives that can help York reduce its carbon emissions. Based on student preferences, we selected three areas for action. Commuting to campus, university purchase of goods and services, and food consumption and production on campus. A key component of this project is to connect students with those individuals at York who develop climate initiatives in relevant operational areas. Some are invited as guest speakers, such as the Program Director, Office of Sustainability, or the author of York's first carbon inventory. Others meet with the student teams that are assigned to their area of expertise, such as procurement, food, etc. This gives students a better understanding of the practical opportunities and barriers for climate action in the York context. This past term, students worked in 13 teams comprised of five to seven students to surface best practices from universities globally and develop creative and practical recommendations that address York's carbon profile and context. On the topic of commuting to campus, for example, Students recommended enhancing the use of public transit by way of universal transit passes for students and suggested parking discounts for electric vehicles and carpooling, the electrification of buses and engaging students in carbon-friendly commuting through gamification and apps. Students pitched their recommendations in a case competition to a panel composed of York senior administrators and sustainability leaders as well as business experts. It is immensely empowering for students to present their recommendations directly to a panel of York decision makers. One student remarked about the team case competition, one of the only final projects where I feel my effort might make a change in the real world. In addition to providing an experiential learning experience, the case competition event thus shows to students that they are not helpless, but have agency. They are change agents in their own communities, at York, and at their future workplace. They also take away a better understanding of SDG 13 climate action and of the UN SDGs more generally. I am confident that infusing SDG 13 in my course will help incubate the next generation of sustainable change agents with the skills, knowledge, and mindsets to face the complex challenges articulated by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Change happens at the level of communities where we feel a connection and can take concrete action. It is our privilege as educators to create these opportunities for connection and action surrounding the UN SDGs right here at York University. So that's just one of our curricular champion videos. Uh, we have eight now and they are on the toolkit and they're, they come, they're from a variety of um, faculty and disciplines across universities. So not only focusing on environmental and climate change, we have from dance, we have from design, we have from our Glendon campus. So there's a lot of uh, interdisciplinary uh, curricular champions there.
The last thing I want to talk about is partnership. And so the hub would not be successful um, without our partners, both within York and our external partners. And so we work along with a lot of different departments at York. So for example, the, some of, these are some of the internal partners. So we work with the teaching commons to help develop um, faculty development um, workshops and tools. Uh, we, folk, we work with York International, our cross-campus uh, cross campus capstone classroom, our SDG student hub, our sustainability office. We actually hold a UNESCO chair, um, not me personally, but we have a UNESCO chair at York University. Um, we work with CFEL, which is um, an organization that collaborates with the UN Institute for Training and Research. Um, we've touched on all of our <clears throat> faculty councils and presented at our faculty councils. And we work with the Knowledge Mobilization Unit to to get it out there um, across campus that the hub is there. Our external partners, SDSN, we've worked with the United, United Nations Academic Impact Units, other universities, um, faculty have worked with other um, organizations, other universities through their faculty research. Um, we've had projects through our globally network learning, uh, so linking classrooms across the world, and then uh, capstone projects with external partners. So Tracy and Nenema are now going to take over and showcase uh, the toolkit. Uh, thank you, Sandra. So we're gonna give you an overview about the SDGs in the classroom toolkit. So why was the toolkit created? So the SDGs in the classroom toolkit is built to help instructors infuse the 17 UN SDGs or sustainable development goals into their classroom. The toolkit was created through consultation with faculty members at York University. So what is in the toolkit? So this is a living resource, as Sandra has mentioned. So we constantly update, regularly update the toolkit. We add new resources. And uh, these resources um, are, are this resource, the toolkit is created with a vision to provide developed and curated resources and materials along with the collaboration opportunities to support the instructors. So, so as a, it's gonna be a one year anniversary for our toolkit, we launched the toolkit last year in June. So we just wanted to share some stats with you. So, so we had uh, over more than 14,000 view, 14, views and SDG 3 and SDG 2 and SDG 10 are the most popular SDGs, uh, which are viewed uh, on our website. And maths and stats, science, business, and EUC have emerged as the disciplines that are very popular on the website. And we have visits from Canada, Lithuania, Mongolia, Chile, Australia, Brazil, Bahamas, and France, and many other countries as well. Uh, so we are quite popular, So which is, uh, which is something we really like. And then, as Sandra has already mentioned, so we completed the French translation of the toolkit recently, and the, uh, the French it, the toolkit will be available in French soon. So now, uh, Tracy is going to talk about uh, the toolkit, and she's going to actually take you to the toolkit website to showcase you what resources we have there. Uh, right. So over to you, Tracy. Thanks, Nidama. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming this morning. Um, we've got a QR code if you want to scan it, and I'm also um, going to send you the link um, in the chat. Um, and just to give you an overview um, of the toolkit, the main sections, um, of course, we have an about section. We also have design and deliver. Um, infusing the SDGs into teaching. We have a collaborate section, and then we also have um, general FAQs along with an events calendar, and we also have news and announcements, so they are local and global. Um, and just to reiterate, um, we are constantly adding to our toolkit and this happens on um, a weekly basis. We also welcome people um, to collaborate with us if they have materials or resources that they would like to share. Um, we definitely welcome those and there are ways to get in touch with us and, and I'll go through that. 
So I'm just going to share my screen um, and I'm going to take you through a walk of the toolkit. And then afterwards, um, just a quick, fun little test. We're going to do a scavenger hunt. Actually, I shouldn't say test, maybe, but we'll just say scavenger hunt. So here um, on my screen, this is our main page of the toolkit. So we have um, a few links and, of course, a bit of our background. Um, we've also designed um, the toolkit for um, any teacher coming from uh, any background, any level of experience. So if we have teachers that are, are new to the profession and new to SDGs, they can jump right in. If we have more seasoned, experienced teachers, um, but perhaps they're new to the SDGs, we have something for everyone and you can start where you're at in your journey with the SDGs. So we're gonna take a look at first up here in the second tab, design and deliver. And we have some teaching approaches. So we also designed um, the toolkit based on feedback from teachers, um, instructors at York. So what did they want? Uh, they told us and we did it. So we created this. So um, for example, if we go down to a uh, systems thinking approach, um, all of the approaches are designed the same. We have a brief introduction. We also offer um, some videos, uh, or we may have articles, for example, um, and links to um, uh, pertinent websites related to that teaching approach. Uh, back up at the top of the design and deliver, um, if we underneath teaching approaches, we have a designing section. So if teachers are interested in creating their own materials, perhaps um, refreshing something that they've used previously for a long time, we have some style guidelines from the UN. Also, some course design questions to consider. Then we've um, created sections of ed tech tools. So um, if you're looking for something for collaboration with your students or discussion production tools, we have those. We have contextual effective practices. Um, we also have some course checklists and example syllabi. So I'm just going to click on that one. Um, so you'll see, and we also have um, global resources, right? So we wanted to make sure that we are um, creating content that's valuable across Canada um, and across the world. So um, we have a mapping tool as well if you want to uh, jump in and see if your course or your particular class um, is already covering the SDGs, perhaps you can do that. We also have a lesson planning resources, and these are uh, general enough um, that they're for any uh, discipline. So we've got a planning section, uh, for example, Learning for Justice is here, Oxfam's Teaching um, Guide, um, UNESCO and UNICEF, of course, um, the World Business Council, Good Life Goals. We also have some helpful tools um, and also videos as well. So now I'm going to jump over to the next tab up at the top, Infuse SDGs into Teaching. And we're going to take a look at our Teaching the 17 um, SDGs. So here we've designed this page. You can find all 17 SDGs in one place. Um, I'm just going to click on SDG number four. And here what we've done um, is created or designed all the SDG pages um, to be identical so that there's consistency. So we have, for example, blogs, um, case studies. We also have infographics, lesson plans, all the way down to videos and websites. So these are all related to SDG number four. Um, also underneath Infuse SDGs, we have discipline specific materials. So here we've gone discipline by discipline and we have searched and um, added uh, materials that are specific to business, for example, or environmental and urban change, humanities, health, sciences, social work. So if I click on health, for example, 
Um, and again, we designed them all the same. So whether or not you're in health or you go into education in ESL or communications, you're going to see the same uh, content organized. So we have lesson plans. Uh, we also have case studies and some uh, disciplines have a few more things than others as we collect them. It takes us time to vet them all as well. And then we have a list of classroom support materials. So here we have um, bespoke um, resources. Um, then we have also included uh, general resources as well. So we have, for example, in health, we have the bio render, uh, Fair Trade Canada, Global Footprint, if it were my home. Um, and all of these are open access. Uh, and free. And we also have reports. So um, we have quite a few in the health section, as you can see. So um, feel free to, to explore your discipline. And then also underneath um, Infuse SDGs, we have SDG resources for the classroom. So here we have a wealth of resources. Um, I'll just shrink that one. So we have case studies, um, infographics. We also have organizations. I'll pop this one open. We have Canadian and global. So depending on the type of content you want to address, um, you should be able to find something um, and uh, partnerships, organizations, businesses, community leaders. We've um, tried to include as many as we can find. Podcasts. Um, we had a uh, quite a few requests um, by students, by faculty um, for podcast podcast content. Um, so we have Canadian again and global. And then we've also got and uh, we redesigned our section here. So uh, we have SDG guides and toolkits. So they've already created an abundance of SDG related um, lessons, materials, uh, resources. So we've just um, added them in. Um, SDG toolkits, for example, um, and SDGs take action. So these can uh, be used with your students um, in your lessons, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, whatever you'd like. And then we've also gone through and found um, more videos, uh, websites, and then, of course, websites with videos um, with content that you can use to support your lessons and projects and more. Um, also, we have our collaborate section um, and as um, the next tab over. So as um, Sandra mentioned, we have our community of practice and I put the link in there as well. So we talk about what is our community of practice. And if you would like to be involved, there is a sign up form. We also have um, a collaborate section and, of course, our curricular champions. Uh, and you will see all eight of our curricular champion videos here. Okay, and then just basically our calendar um, events and announcements. So we have um, a featured event. We also have some current events. Um, and then we also go into some current announcements and our past events and announcements as well, so that people can see what we've been up to. So I'll just stop sharing uh, for now. So that's a walkthrough of the toolkit. Um, and then Ninema, if you can bring up the screen. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll go through um, on the next slide. Okay, so we're gonna do just a fun activity. Um, we're gonna have a toolkit scavenger hunt because we really want you to get in there, look around um, and search. So um, we'll have about two minutes. So what we would like you to do is find one infographic about one SDG, choose whatever you'd like, in the teaching the 17 SDGs section. So we'll start the timer. Uh, Nidima, if, yep. All right. So we'll give it about two minutes. And also, if anyone has questions, we welcome you to um, put them into the chat or, of course, um, verbally, if you'd like to raise your hand and we can address that. 
And again, the link for the toolkit is in the chat, um, or if you scanned the uh, QR code, you'll have it there. Everyone's been able to find one, I hope so. Okay, so it looks like um, uh, Carolyn found uh, one for goal eight, is that correct? Very good, all right. And then um, Ishari looks like um, found goal one for goal 17, that's great. All right, if anyone else wants to let us know, you can put it in the chat. Um, let's go to the next one, uh, please. And, uh, oh, Mohammed, thank you. Found an infographic on um, SDG number nine. Nicely done. All right. So let's take a look. Our next scavenger um, will be for finding one podcast. Um, Nidima, you can start the timer. Um, or one SDG guide in the SDGs in the classroom resources section. So this is one of the meaty um, sections of the toolkit. All right, Shari found um, Alliance 2030 uh, podcasts. Yes, excellent. Uh, Zeb found podcasts as well. All right. And we had a question about competencies. Um, I just put a link uh, quickly in there. It's uh, in the contextual effective practices. That's great. So I hope everyone uh, was able to find a um, podcast or a guide. Um, but so far, the ones that people have uh, found, great. So let's take a look at our the last one. What we'd like you to do is hunt for one lesson plan uh, for your discipline in the discipline-specific section. If you can start the timer, Nana. Uh, Autumn, oh, great. You found the uh, the Tropics U um, uh, lessons. Yeah, they're they're fantastic. They're quite detailed, um, so that's great. Um, I also put another link in. We had a question about the competencies um, and something related is the rounder sense of purpose. So I put the website there if people want um, to explore. Um, Ishari, uh, photosynthesis, you found a lesson plan. That sounds exciting, especially for a Friday, right? <laughs> Um, and Zeb, uh, oh, Eco Schools and the Global Lesson Plans. Yeah, another wonderful website, um, a plethora of information there um, and a lot of help. Uh, great, great website. Thank you for sharing that for those. Great. Um, I don't think we have any hands up. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody there with hands. So I think we're good. Okay. And we're almost done with the two minutes, oops, I'll admit. Great. Okay, thank you everyone for participating in the um, uh, scavenger hunt. And hopefully you had a chance to really um, get a little more into uh, the toolkit. And of course, if you uh, have questions, if you want to collaborate or share, um, please reach out and let us know. Um, if anyone has a Q&A, uh, a question, um, you can, we'll open the floor for that if you want to raise your hand or if anyone has one for the chat, uh, you can let us know. Um, or Sandra and Nidima, if there's anything you would like before we close, uh, before we finish. Yeah, no, we have uh, five minutes just left, so um, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have about the uh, the hub or the toolkit, community of practice. So we'll stay on for uh, the next five minutes. But we thank you um, to everyone who uh, came to our presentation today. Uh, um, Abby. Abby. Yeah, really interesting toolkit you uh, you have with a lot of really great resources. What has adoption looked like among faculty, um, specifically the breadth of faculty um, in adopting and actually implementing some of these tools? So this is a fantastic question, Abby. So, um, so we actually just sent out a survey this week about the toolkits. So that's a timely question. So we've had good uptake. Um, for sure, with the toolkit, it's it's mainly trying to get it out there that the toolkit is there. Once we get it out there that the toolkit is there, 
we have uh, faculty that have been using it. Um, and so we've had, um, you know, we, we've the Google Analytics has shown us that we've had over 14,000 um, views. We're in the first year of the hub. And so we're going to be starting to evaluate and really digging deeper to see if um, the faculty uptake of the toolkits into the classroom. And so year one of the hub was just getting it out there that the toolkits here was a lot of knowledge mobilization. And then now we're starting to, you know, ask those questions. Are you using it? What are you using it for? How are you infusing it? What can we do differently? So and that's where we're at right now is asking those questions. Awesome. Thank you. Mohammed? Mohammed? Hi, uh, just following up on, on the previous question, will you be sharing the results of this uh, study that looks at how faculty are using um, um, this, uh, this curricula and, and the uh, kind of how they're integrating, rather, sorry, the toolkit, how they're using the toolkit into the curricula that they're teaching? Sure, we will. Definitely. Yeah, awesome. we I haven't, I mean, definitely, I mean, we absolutely should be turning this into like a, a real research project and publishing this because uh, the toolkit is just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're very, very much open access and we'll share it. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks very much. So we have just one minute left. If there's any other um, burning questions? Well, I will say thank you again for coming to our presentation and hearing about our SDGs in the Classroom Curricular Innovation Hub and our toolkit and community of practice. And please reach out to us. Um, you can go to the toolkit and reach out to us that way, or um, we, we've uh, got our emails there on the last slide, but I think the easiest way is probably through the toolkit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to add something, Chrissy, uh, Sandra, that if there are any things that, that people want us to add to the toolkit, any videos, mm -hmm. any lesson plans that they have and they want that it should be on the toolkit, please do share with us. Or if you think that there is uh, there is one section that's missing or you want some resources there, do let us know. And we would be happy to add those or find those for people. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>